So we are here at the Roots Asia Conference in the beautiful city of Chiang Mai in Thailand and I'm joined here by Stefano Baronchi who is Director General of ACI Asia Pacific Region. So Stefano, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks. My first question for you is how would you characterize your region? What sets it apart from other regions such as Europe, North America? What makes it unique? Well, our region is a kind of a destination experience. This has been the case uh, until 2019 and uh, uh, that meant fundamentally that uh, the customers were uh, really giving uh, uh, recognizing value to the quality of the service to the experience that we were providing to them there was a lot of work that uh, not just the airports but also the airlines in this region and uh, the cities of destinations were doing to build this experience and i think this is really what uh, make asia pacific differing from uh, regions such as Europe and North America. Absolutely, we're in the experience business Indeed. as airports, aren't yes. we? And I think it will get there. Um, now, how do you think 2023 will go um, versus 2022 for the airports in your region? 2023 will be certainly uh, a, a peculiar year for uh, Asia Pacific because uh, we will see a stronger recovery compared to 2022, which has uh, been uh, quite greedy in terms of uh, uh, traffic recovery, we uh, estimate that about 55% of traffic versus 2019 uh, uh, was recovered in 2022. 2023 will benefit uh, fundamentally from the reopening of traffic, uh, from the fact that there is a, a huge pent up demand uh, in Asia, that there is uh, uh, the possibility for a higher uh, level of population uh, that is eager to travel in our region. Uh, so we have uh, very positive expectations. It will probably not mean recovering up to the levels of 2019, uh, but certainly marking a significant uh, recovery. Now, what role did um, your organization play in the reopening of this region? It has been an important role, the ones that we played. Of course, it was done in cooperation uh, with uh, uh, the airport members. We had to learn uh, to uh, enlarge, widen our consultations uh, with uh, bodies uh, that were not so used uh, uh, to speak regularly uh, with the air transport sector, uh, and I think especially about uh, the health authorities. Uh, so uh, the, the work has to be done, of course, at the national level tailored to the countries because they, each country has different capacity to uh, manage the risk. And uh, we did uh, build uh, this consultation, this dialogue, and with the positive ex effects such as in Japan. Now, uh, I mean, China's just reopened, uh, it's fantastic news, but do you think they'll be on the back foot, um, you know, because of a result of taking so long to open, or are they big, big enough to come back with a bang in your They opinion? certainly have uh, wide shoulders, big shoulders uh, for uh, coming back, and coming back uh, strongly. Uh, the fact of uh, having reopened only recently means that it will take a bit longer. But considering that uh, the Chinese market is uh, primarily composed of domestic traffic, from uh, the statistics we see uh, already that uh, the level recovering strongly. For international traffic, will take uh, uh, longer, probably six, eight months. Uh, to see, you know, something uh, more similar to the 2019 levels. I guess travellers will be put off by the, the restrictions that some governments are imposing on them. This is what is uh, of concern for, for us. We have already stated at the end of last year that, uh, uh, you know, protocols including uh, sequential testing such as the ones applied uh, uh, by the Republic of Korea of Japan uh, uh, is uh, uh, not uh, uh, founded on objective evidence. Uh, and of course we would like uh, really uh, we continue to stick to the science and the science so far uh, has shown that vaccination is a uh, key uh, to mitigate the risk and most of the countries have fundamentally reopened uh, there has been in terms of sequence of variants uh, no alarm uh, coming from china so we really hope that the countries which have applied some uh, testing uh, will review sooner than later uh, their protocols now, what, in your, opin in your opinion, do you, the airports that you serve need to do to prepare for the, the passenger of the future? Well, the, it's, it's always the same job, but uh, with different challenges. Uh, I, I think that everybody has understood that the level of risk that the airports have to face is higher uh, than uh, and the perception we had before, uh, before COVID. 
uh, I think in terms of diversification of the business, this means uh, kind of reviewing the revenue streams, diversifying the revenue streams uh, that can come uh, either from the aeronautical side uh, through the passengers, uh, but also uh, through investment in uh, real estate. Most of the CEOs and also the colleagues who are active today in this event are working very hard to reconnect as much as possible with other countries internationally. Now, you said on your panel today um, that isolationism was, uh, had crept in, um, crept back in during the pandemic. What is your view on this and how do you lobby for globalization? Because we yeah. all know the benefits. Yeah, I, I mean, of course, it, 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 I could, we could call it globalization, we could call it multilateralism. Uh, in, a, in effect, multilateralism was in retreat during the last uh, uh, three years. So it is a matter really to, uh, to think uh, behind the box learning from other practices, best practices. This is what fundamentally Asia Asia Pacific facilitates, learning from other experiences and trying to adapt it locally, uh, nationally. So this is what we will continue to do. Now you said your region has a more challenging task uh, in terms of sustainability than its counter regions, uh, mainly in terms of governments making good on their pledges to net zero by actually setting legal frameworks yeah. um, for this. What work is, um, is ACI APAC doing to try and nudge them in this, uh, in this direction? Yeah, if I had uh, to invest most of my resources, uh, it would certainly be uh, in uh, the topic of uh, uh, fighting climate change in this region. And I'm uh, very uh, cognizant of the fact that there is a lot of work to do because this has to be tailored nationally. It has to be tailored to the capacity and capabilities, not just of the airports, but the other stakeholders, uh, uh, to set a plan, to agree on this plan and to implement it. So it's, it's a long-term uh, exercise that will involve uh, not just the aviation sector, tourism sector and beyond. And certainly as an Air Force, we have a role to play. The Airport Carbon Accreditation is one of the programs uh, that CACI involved and uh, particularly 66 airports are participating in it in the region. We want more airports to be involved in the region. Now, sustainable aviation fuel is a, a hot topic on the agenda, as always. Um, the, the, the challenges will be um, supplying the demand in yeah. the future. Um, what needs to be done in your region? Are there any SAF plants, uh, for example, at the moment, or are there plans to, to manufacture any of these? Or? Yeah, there are plants, and there are countries such as uh, Japan, uh, India, New Zealand, and Australia that are uh, showing the way by engaging uh, more stakeholders, uh, including airports. Uh, so we need manufacturers, uh, airline manufacturers, we need airports, we need airlines, uh, we need uh, uh, energy uh, industries in the energy sector, we need startups to do it. We have to create this coalition, and recently this is what has been uh, launched uh, in, uh, in New Zealand, uh, targeting uh, net zero by 2050, if not early, uh, earlier. So uh, <laughs> this is what the other countries have to look at, mm. and uh, they can certainly benefit from the support of the Asia Pacific. So New Zealand is kind of leading the way, you would say, in the region? It is. Uh, Chris Church Airport uh, signed a deal uh, with other partners uh, to do that, and uh, is, uh, have actually was leading uh, this, uh, this process. Uh, yeah. But again, it's, uh, um, uh, nobody you know, can, uh, can, is sufficient to, to sort out the problem. Uh, we, we need uh, uh, to really to have the support of all uh, the stakeholders there. Yeah. Now, what is your business outlook for the future? It's positive. It, it is certainly positive, but, we're, but with the cautious optimism uh, that uh, some uh, international institutions, such as the IMF, uh, have, uh, have shared. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we, are, uh, we know what uh, our skills are. We know what our expertise is. We know that the pent-up demand is there. But we are also cognizant of the fact that there are macro and micro uh, economic uh, challenges that, that uh, we have uh, to face. Uh, so um, certainly some new solutions have to, will have to be identified and technology uh, is one of uh, the levels where we have to work uh, more. Is a tool that can help us uh, to, to reach the objectives that we set for the future. And uh, as a side note, has um, Asia Pacific as a region suffered in terms of the workforce shortage like Europe has, for example? Less so. Less so. Less so because uh, we reopened uh, la uh, later than the other regions. Less so 
uh, because to some extent, and uh, China is a good example, the fact of having public companies has facilitated, facilitated the choice of the states to retain uh, the workforce. Less so because we could learn uh, from the experience in other countries and prepare for it. But if you ask me if this may be a risk in the future, I do not exclude it, considering that, as you know, there are many stakeholders operating at uh, the airport and on the ground, uh, the, like the ramp, uh, ground handling services. Uh, uh, there, is a, uh, it is, uh, there is a risk, but also an opportunity to review how we interact with them and make sure that the workforce is there uh, for uh, serving the passengers. That's why technology will be so important going forward, I guess. Yes, yes, indeed. I mean, uh, uh, technology is a, a tool uh, uh, to put actually the people at the center of the process, but to do it in a very different way, uh, in a way that is more efficient, in a way that is also more boring, uh, less boring, sorry, less boring from a, from a, from a, from a, from a uh, you know, a, an employee perspective to do a job. Yeah. Uh, for example, on, on the level of security, the fact of uh, counting on the right technology means being able to profile the possible risk in a different way, rather than uh, spending all your time in front of an X-ray or of a screen uh, to say to detect uh, if uh, uh, there is a risk. Absolutely, and they can focus on more high value tasks um, you know, Indeed. interacting with the passenger Indeed. rather than, Absolutely. like you said, boring yeah. tasks. Yeah. <laughs> Stefano, that was my final question. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.